Welcome to Bridges KLC TV. We're coming to you live from the MTM studio. And my name is Karen Connell. I'm your host today. And I have a wonderful guest who is not a stranger to Bridges KLC TV, and that is Anne. Say thank you for coming again today. Thank you. It's lovely to be back. Yay. We are so excited because, um, as I've mentioned before, uh, but some of you may not uh, know, Anne is a life coach, she is a mentor, a speaker, and an author. Um, and she has a number of resources that you can access at her website, um, www.annebsay.com. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to really address today, and we're really excited, is because you have just published your first children's book. My first children's book. Yes. Yeah, and it's called The Peculiar Pirates of the Okie Pinocchi. Yes. Um, I feel like I've had another grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, I happened to uh, read this book myself. I asked her if I could get a copy of it, and I absolutely loved it. Thank you. I love the illustrations. I love the story, the plot. Um, I love the moral of the story. So many stories these days miss the moral mm. um, to pass on to the younger generation, but this one was great. It was simple and it was profound. Um, so I wanted you to just um, tell me a little bit uh, about this book. Could you do that? I can. Um, I have always been a writer. Ever since I was a little kid, I was writing something. And um, so combining writing and my love to read um, and then in being a teacher I, I love children's books and I love children's books and in the past three years I've published two that are faith-based books nonfiction for adults but I had I had these this desire in my heart to write something fiction but honestly Karen I had no idea where to start so um, I married my husband a few years ago, and when we got married, I noticed that his youngest granddaughter would say the funniest things, just these little one-liners. And I think, oh my goodness, that would make a wonderful children's title, a book title. And so I collected them, and I got her mother's permission to you know, use them. And I sat down one day because I thought, well, I, I got an idea for the plot of this. And so I wrote it out and I got it done and I, I was like, wow, that, that was like not too hard. And I read the story and it was terrible. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it was awful. I wouldn't even want to read that to a child. But it was, you know, I, it was my attempt. And so I dabbled in a couple of others, but I just couldn't seem to get any traction with them. I couldn't seem to get inspired. So I just laid it aside and I bought a couple of how-to books on Amazon, you know, by some famous children's writers. And then one day I had a brilliant idea. I decided to enlist the help of an expert. So I called my four-year-old granddaughter and asked her if she would like to write a story with her Mimi. Oh, okay, so the, the expert was your four-year-old granddaughter. She's, she was four years old when we started this project. And her name is? Mary Ann. So Mary Ann is also a part of, is a co-author to this. She is the co-author. Okay. Um, she is the co-author because, um, Karen, what I did was I asked her what the story should be about, and she said, pirates. <laughs> and um, I love stories that are placed in real places, you know, fiction that's, that's done in a real place. And I love words. And so for me, okie finoki is just a really fun word to say. So I decided the pirates should live in okie finoki, which, as you know, is a swamp. Yes. Which then I thought they would have to be peculiar to live in a swamp. So that's how the title came around. So I sent my granddaughter some questions, you know, just general plot questions and, and character questions, and she answered them brilliantly. <laughs> so I sent her some more questions because I thought, we're on a roll. We might actually write this book. And she answered those, and I had enough material where I sat down and I wrote the story. Now, it was funny because um, it takes place in the spring in the Okefenokee swamp and I decided that it would have been a very rainy winter 
kind of like what we've had. And, and so the rivers, there's two rivers that flow through there, that they would be full and running and there would be lots and lots of spring life, which made for a great setting for a river festival. Because my granddaughter, having seen the pictures of the Swanee and the St. Mary River, said that the big problem would be in a boat race. Okay, so the, your expert, who is four years old, yes, who kept giving me material and ideas yes. for this wonderful children's book, she also set the scene for uh, a boat race. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, because a child is full of wonder and adventure. Oh, yes. I mean, Especially that gets me one. excited, you know, yeah. yes. and I can imagine doing a boat race in the swamp of the Okie <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And so um, the plot develops as the day of the boat race is approaching, and um, our five main characters are five little kid pirates, three sisters. Oh, my. Okay. Flower, Tiger Lily, and Christmas Angel. Oh, all right. And two boys who are best friends, and they live next door to each other, Doc and Tixie. Oh, okay. So every year they develop, they build their own boats, and, um, and, Doc's and Doc and Tixie start to get competitive in oh. their boat building. Oh. And they kind of forget it's a parade, and they start to become very competitive about who's going to be fastest and whose dad is helping better. And, and the more competitive they become, the meaner they become to each other. And the more meaner they become, the more they turn into crocodiles. Oh, oh. So we have a crocodile problem. Oh, I see. And I am sure that Marianne helped contribute to the idea of them turning into crocodiles. Well, she did. Yes. As a matter of fact. I, I, and <laughs> do you think that she had any home influence with that? I believe her younger brother probably <laughs> influenced that quite a bit. Um, and lo and behold, the three girls come to the rescue of the boys um, and solve the problem. They divert a huge disaster. No lives are lost. Oh. No bit bones are broken. Um, and so the girls really have shown the boys, you know, the, the proper way to behave. And which is? Um, well, I thought the story was girls rule, boys drool. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew that's sort of what was happening in the dynamics of, of their home. Um, but she said to me one day, she said, well, my inspiration for the story was my scripture memory verse that week. Oh, my land. <laughs> and um, we were on a video call, and I, I said, what? And she sat up straight and tall, and she looked at me, and she said, be kind and compassionate to one another, caring, forgiving each other as God has forgiven you in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 4.32. And then she smiled. Wow. <laughs> and I thought, what a brilliant young author who knew enough to ground her story in something that not only was she experiencing, but um, that was truth, that was just good truth. Well, out of the mouth of babes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love, the one reason why I love children's stories so much is they can take complicated ideas and they can just make them simple. Oh, they do. Easy to understand. For me, mm -hmm. children's material is entertaining, it's engaging, mm -hmm. it, causes, it causes the little girl in me to, to <laughs> rise up. But I'm just amazed at Marianne. I'm mm -hmm. amazed that uh, that she knew all along this was coming from that place. And, and this is an encouragement for parents, isn't it, and grandparents. You're, it, when you put the word in your child, the mm -hmm. word bears fruit. At four years old, the word was already bearing fruit in Marianne's life. Yes. And she's able to tell a story that other children can learn mm -hmm. the same word. And that really is her heart for our little book, for our project, oh. is that Jesus would use it to touch the lives of other little children. I mean, that's, that's who she is. She's a little precocious, but that's who she is in her heart. <laughs> well, and didn't you say that she just recently went to her local library and shared? And tell me about mm. that experience. Yeah. They live in a small town, and um, it's, it's a family town, you know, a lot of young families there. And they're very active in their local library and in their church. 
And so she called last night. She she's had an appointment. Oh my, four years old. She had an appointment. She, a meeting. She said she I had, had a meet. meeting okay. with the children's librarian, and she was very excited about it. So in her meeting, she brought her book, The Peculiar Pirates of Okie Finoki, and showed it to the librarian and explained to her how her Mimi, and you know, and her wrote this story together. <clears throat> Excuse me. And by the end of the meeting, the librarian was so captivated with the story, they've included it in their collection, so it's available for checkout. Oh, my land. That's um, awesome. And, and apparently in this town, they have a local author fair, because there's several, I guess, that live there. And so in June, Marianne will have her own table at the local author fair um, to be able to share her story with people. That is, that is so exciting. One of the things that impresses me so much about this process, it, it stays true to who you are. Mm -hmm. You are a mentor and a coach. You, have a, you, have, you are a visionary for other people's lives. You have a heart mm -hmm. and passion for people to find their identity and grow in their identity, to dream with God. I, I love dreaming yeah. with you, yeah. Anne. <laughs> and... So in this process, you had a dream in your heart to write a children's book, um, but you just weren't able to get there fully on your own. You, you armed yourself, you got some how-to mm -hmm. books, you learned, but you, you just still had something missing. Yeah. So you enlisted the help of a four-year-old granddaughter mm -hmm. as your resident expert, and now at four years old, a young life has been dramatically changed. She is a published author. <laughs> I mean, she's. Uh, tell me what. Tell everybody the story of when the book arrived at their house. The hard copy. Oh, that was just delightful. I I was so grateful to be able to share in that. Um, we had been working on this and sending it back and forth in paper copy, and um, no illustrations whatsoever. And it went back and forth, and somehow Marianne's father, her papa, had, had just sort of, you know, kind of gone on autopilot with it. And so I sent them out a small shipment of books, you know, for sample and, and for them to enjoy and, and share in their town. And they opened the box, and they all looked at it and said, oh my goodness, it's really a book. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. It's real. It's not imagination. Yeah. I'm a little boy. Um, so it was really fun um, to see them, to see it come to life, not only for me, but also for Marianne and for her family. Well, it's not just real. It's also published on Amazon. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. And my granddaughter knows what Amazon is, and she's quite proud of the fact that she's on Amazon. Now. Yes. So that it became yeah. even more real to her. Yeah. Um, you, you also mentioned in the book about the illustrations. Now, that, again, your dream, dr I, I like to use the analogy of a river when it comes to dreams. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 a river stays and it, it's growing, but when it fills up, it, it widens, it broadens. And it seems like when we really get connected to God's dreams in our lives, our, um, our banks widen. Yeah. Uh, the, our capacity yeah. becomes greater to carry those dreams and what happens is we gather those alongside the banks with us so you've gathered Marianne into your dream mm -hmm. and now she has a dream fulfilled and she has gone to a place she never imagined mm -hmm. but someone else did too tell us about that you're in, with the illustrations oh yes so I um, I knew I needed an illustrator and um, I, I was reminded regularly on the home front that there was no budget for an illustrator. So I, I trusted God because, you know, God doesn't bring us so far to disappoint us. Right. Um, he always has more resources. So I, I, I knew I had faith that an illustrator would come from somewhere. And then um, I think it was actually my daughter that mentioned my neighbor is a painter. And she had met my neighbor at the Come Alive conference that we talked about. And... Um, so I went to my neighbor, Susan Jensen, and asked her if she'd be interested in experimenting with the illustrations. And she said, I'm not an illustrator. And I said, why don't you give it a shot, you know, and see what you can do. And she hemmed and hawed, and, um, but I think, I think she was curious, you know. I, I think she was very curious to, 
to feel what it would to look see what it would feel like to explore an area just you know one step away from what she did normally and um, she did and she did a brilliant job she, um, I gave her complete creative control and said here's the manuscript you know do do what you see like paint what you see and I told her I wanted it to be childlike um, and and she really has done a nice job portraying the characters and the scenes um, from a child's eyes as if a, as if a child had driven drew, drawn, driven drawn them drawn. <laughs> I'll get the word eventually so um, again, this is another person. Had she ever? She hadn't ever illustrated. No. Before she, she's never been published as an illustrator before. No. So, as you trusted God, stepped out here. I, what I'm hearing is, you may not have been fully qualified to get there, but God qualified you by bringing others along in your mm -hmm. dream. And we have three people published that were that. Well, you have been published in the previous mm -hmm. books, but two of those people had never been published. And that is all because Anne dared to dream and was willing to risk and reach out and allow God to gather others in your dream. Yeah. And, and that is, goes right back to who you are. This is what you do. So without you even probably thinking about it, you were living out what's in your heart for other people. Yeah. You did it yourself yeah. and brought others along. It's funny, when, when we talked about that, it didn't occur to me. It, it just didn't occur to me, um, which amazed me. First, <laughs> I was the first one amazed that I didn't really have to work at it, um, that I was just trusting God and God provided the resources. So when they came and when I was literally able to come underneath and lift up two other people into a, a new part of their destiny, I didn't, I wasn't really thinking about it and it wasn't really work. It just came naturally. And I loved how you said, you know, when, when you're walking in your purpose, it, you know, you're busy, you're busy. But a lot of times, it, especially when we're on the verge of something new and we're doing it out of joy and fun, um, it's not work. It just God just provides I, because I, I think He's very invested in our joy. Okay, so spend a few moments <laughs> on talking about that. God being invested in joy and mm -hmm. in our joy. I think of God a lot like the perfect dad, and um, the perfect dad delights in his children. Um, my son-in-law is an excellent example of that. He gets down on the floor. He plays with the kids on their level. And so because of that, I kind of look at these real pictures that, you know, that we can see here. And, and I think, well, if, if that's what a good dad looks like, how much more of a good dad is God? And if my son-in-law delights so much in the joy of his children's heart, and, and they, are, they are dreamers. We, we, between the living room and the, and the kitchen, we'll travel half around, halfway around the world. So he will go there and, and I will go there with them. But so much more isn't God with us that way. I believe that he plants these things in us that they're like treasures that we get to see, search out. And when we discover them, not only do we experience joy, but he experiences joy because we're happy, like a good dad would. Oh, and, and your story with this book, I think, is a good example of that because it's like God has given you an invitation to explore. Mm -hmm. He put it in your heart to write a children's book, knowing that was beyond your own natural reach with, <laughs> on your own. And yet, it was, it was like, uh, in Proverbs it says that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. Yes. And it's the glory of kings to seek it out, mm -hmm. to seek those matters out. And it is like a treasure hunt. And so it's, it's almost like your daddy God coming in, uh, if, if you will, coming in and saying, okay, Anne, I've got a new treasure, and it's, um, you're going to find it on this treasure hunt. I want you to join me. And he puts in your heart, I want you to write a children's book. And in this, you're, you're going down all the little pathways with God, 
exploring this, risking, mm -hmm. it's something new, it's new territory, but discovering what wonderful treasures. I think about your relationship with your granddaughter. This is a memory you and your granddaughter will <laughs> forever have. Mm -hmm. Indeed. It's, it's part of your story mm -hmm. together. When uh, she and Mimi <laughs> wrote a book together and got it published on Amazon, which isn't going to go away. It's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And that's part of your history together. And Jan, the illustrator, wow, she, she now can say she is published. She's a published mm -hmm. illustrator. And this is part of her history, but these are treasures. You had no idea. Yeah. You had no idea that those were treasures. Mm -hmm. And God was inviting you. And it, it's just, I can see him with so much joy and so much pleasure every time you would get up and, okay, okay, let, let's see <laughs> how this is going to unfold today. And then when you would discover one of those treasures, I can imagine, as you're describing, mm -hmm. the joy yeah. he had to feel. And then... When it came together, wow! I imagine that was a celebration in heaven. It well, it, it was a celebration here too, <laughs> but I believe it was in heaven because it's something you know that wasn't there before, and now it exists. Yes. You know, um, the scripture says God calls things into existence, and I believe that through me, He called this book into existence, and because of that. Um, you know, Marianne wants to write another book and Susan would like to do more illustrations and other moms and grandmoms are dreaming of writing books with their children and grandchildren and I can help them do that. Um, so it's like they got caught up in my dream too. Yes. And my dream burst more dreams in, in other people. Yes, yeah. I, I, it, it's illustrated beautifully and, and we mentioned the Come Alive conference created to create we just alluded to it briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, in our previous interview, we talked about it a little bit more extensively. But if, I'm, if I recall, um, because part of what you do as a uh, life coach and as a mentor is um, that one of the young women that you have been pouring into since the conference actually has a published children's book also. Is yes. that correct? Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. I mean, it just keeps going. Yeah. yeah. Her book is very special. Um, she, she wrote it with her son, her oldest son, who's eight, I believe. Um, and he was home the day after the conference because I think he had too much sugar at Grandma <laughs> that weekend. <laughs> And so they sat down and wrote this book together, and, and it's, it's very simple, it's brilliant, um, and, and it talks about their story through the eyes of a puppy dog. Through the eyes of a puppy yes. dog, okay. So I'm very proud of her. Um, she's an incredible writer, and this is a new genre for her, um, because we, we talked in our previous interview about people having passions and sort of being called to certain parts of culture, and... I think that's wonderful and that's great. For me, the follow through on that is how much more can we impact you know, that culture? How much more can we impact that segment of um, families or that segment of education and literature? Um, and so I believe that the Peculiar Pirates of Okefenokee because it has truth embedded in it, it's not, you know, a, it's not a Christian book, but it's based on a Christian principle, and that is basically the plot that we're taking a little bit more, we're bringing more truth, more healing, more hope into this segment of our culture with just a simple children's book. And uh, how important that you gave voice to our youngest generation, mm. four years old, for her to find a platform to share the truth, mm. to share Jesus in a way that works for her and her peers. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if you thought about that. That no. is awesome. I just wanted to write a kid's book. <laughs> That is, but that's awesome. You know, with every generation, we are to pass the baton on. I think you really passed well. Thank you. Uh, I want to encourage all of you to get your copy of The Peculiar Pirates of the Okefenokee on Amazon. And make sure you check out Anne's website, www.annebsay.com.
www.kimberlyjoyce.com for all of her resources. And thank you for joining us today.